Hi, I'm Julian Gray, a chronically ill illustrator and comic artist. I've lived with CFSME since I was 19, and I'm also neurodivergent. As a disabled person in our modern times, a lot of my life is spent online. Glued to my laptop, it's often the easiest way to interact with the outside world without exerting too much of my very limited energy. And as a freelancer, it's often the only way for me to network and find opportunities. Here you see a drawing of me sitting on the sofa with my laptop on my lap. I am a young man of average weight, mixed Chinese white, wearing thin rectangular glasses with short dark hair. I'm dressed casually in a hoodie and sweatpants, and I'm in my typical workspace, my living room. Surrounding the sofa are the typical domestic detritus, a cup of tea next to me on the side table, various papers on the coffee table, and my iPad on the sofa beside me. It's not a glamorous workspace. In fact, it's often very messy depending on how much energy I have to tidy the area, which can exacerbate feelings of depression. Some people choose to work from home. I don't have that choice. I work primarily in digital art, and in my experience, the world sees this as lesser than traditional art. I rarely see digital pieces in mainstream art galleries, and when they are shown, they're never part of the permanent exhibitions. How often is digital art lauded as an innovative and valid art form in itself, just like landscapes or sculpture? Many art competitions and grants won't even accept digital artwork. I've spent many evenings poring over arts opportunities for ones that will accept digital art. They probably don't realise that this inherently disadvantages some disabled artists. Let's say, for example, I wanted to enter a competition for traditional portraiture, meaning I would need to produce a piece of artwork on canvas. On this page, I've drawn five small illustrations depicting me in various situations. In my wheelchair at the shop buying paint, in bed using a complicated contraption to hold the canvas at my level, awkwardly hauling an easel around, trying to fold up the easel, and finally, trying to package a painting into a box. I'll go over each drawing and what they mean. Gathering supplies, like the paint and the canvas, would cost precious energy. Not a problem with digital art, as my iPad Pro never runs out of paint. To paint on canvas, I would have to set up a working space that worked with my disability. For some disabled artists, this means buying expensive specialist art equipment and seating equipment that would let them work on a canvas from a reclined or lying down position. With my iPad, I can sit anywhere and work lying down with ease, and there are a ton of tablet holders on the market these days, aimed at the able-bodied main market, which I could buy cheap to help me hold it in place. I usually need to change position regularly while I work, because my body doesn't like being in one position for a long period of time. That would mean moving the easel around costing more energy if I can even lift it in the first place. My iPad can come anywhere with me, and I can even have it on my lap while I'm in my wheelchair. No knocking my wheels into a wooden easel. Putting my work away when I'm done with it would mean folding up the easel and finding room to store it. My iPad takes up less space than my laptop and can be put away in two seconds. Finally, Getting the artwork to the destination involves either spending energy I don't have, bringing it there in person, or paying for expensive shipping. Digital art can be submitted online at no cost. Some disabled artists do prefer to work traditionally, and that's great. But people don't realise how much more accessible digital artwork can be. Even aside from all the things I've just listed, some artists also benefit from assistive technology that they can use while working digitally whether that's magnified zooms to easily view small details of their work, or coloured overlays on the screen. On this page, I've drawn two illustrations beside one another. The first is of a graphic on a Facebook feed that reads, Calling all digital artists, we want to see your creative pandemic pieces. The second is of me on my laptop on a Zoom call. As the COVID pandemic has hit, it's become very apparent that being inclusive of digital needs has never been a matter of not being able to do it, but not wanting to do it. 
Suddenly, now that able-bodied people are stuck at home, as much as us disabled folk, digital art is necessary. It's celebrated. I don't have to go out and meet potential clients or commissioning bodies in person, something that would have laid me out for a few days in the past. I can deliver my work digitally. I'm not an isolated, inconvenient artist struggling to keep up. I'm part of the mainstream now. It's great, but why didn't it happen sooner? I'm not suggesting everything stay digital forever. Post-pandemic, people will go back to networking in person, attending co-working spaces, working in offices. It's necessary for mental health. And just because I can't have it doesn't mean I begrudge people who can benefit from that. All I want is a choice. That I can choose to participate, that it isn't taken away from me by things out of my control. And it's great to see people ask, do you have any accessibility needs? But sometimes I don't want to have the responsibility of coming up with ways that you can help me. On this page, I've drawn myself in a Zoom call with someone. They're talking, and a speech bubble is emerging from the laptop screen. In the bubble is written a phrase I wish people would say more often. This is what we could do for you. Would any of that help? Accessibility needs to be loud and prominent, not an afterthought. I'm tired of seeing, oh, we didn't think about that, or we don't know how to do that. Can you walk us through it? Accessibility needs to be in big letters. We support disabled artists. This is how we can help you. On this page, I've drawn myself sitting in my wheelchair in front of a fence. Several people are smashing away through the fence with big sledgehammers, and another person is stepping over the rubble and holding their hand out to me. Let us participate in the ways we can. Let artists create digitally, remotely, not just during the pandemic, but afterwards. Creating art as a disabled person is sometimes so hard, but we do it because we love it, because we need it. Don't add to art barriers, step over them and offer a helping hand.